Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Game Developer Tycoon. We are developing the game Time Travelers on the play system. I'm worried this could be a flop, you know, I've been taking notes and uh, it doesn't seem to be doing too well. Um, what do we want here? Do we want world design? No we don't, so we don't need to click any options there. Let's pull down the sound a bit so the graphics are better. We're working with a 3D graphics engine on this game and I think it's time to invest a little bit of money into increasing that hype. We're just going to go with magazines this time because we are low on money all around and we are pretty much investing everything into this. And perfect timing, G3 is here as well. That could be really helpful, you know, having the convention right before the game goes on sale. Okay, come on, let the numbers roll in. 51,000. I think we had a higher number than that last time. I can't really remember, actually. Okay, didn't make it into the top 100 booths. That is normal. And we can now finish our game, but we need to get rid of those bugs. We have a lot of hype on this one. And that was only with the um, smallest amount of... Oh, yeah, we had G3 as well. Yeah, the smallest amount of money invested. Anyway, let's finish the game right there while we have a hype of 60. We have a new record for technology, but not for design. Um, apparently the combination was a great combo as well, so we got a nice multiplier on that. Let's release the game. The game reviews for our newly cre uh, newly released game Time Travelers came in. Was it good? Was it bad? It was a 7. Can we get an 8? 7. We need an 8. <laughs> oh, a 6. This isn't good. Action games work well on the play system. Hmm. Well... <laughs> I've got a feeling this one isn't going to sell, but maybe the play system being a new console will have um, a large audience. Anyway, in two months the Vena gear will be taken off the market. And that doesn't look great, does it? That is not a lot. <laughs> yep, I'm not doing well. We are running out of money. We might have to fire our employee at some point. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm really going to have to think about what to do next. We need a hit. We need a hit. That is what we need. Um, we need to start developing a new game straight away. I get this feeling like maybe we just should produce game after game. And you know, the more we pump out, the quicker. Um, then we'll be able to keep ourselves going. Which is a terrible <laughs> business ethic. Because you want to focus you know, on making decent games. And investing in them as well. And I'm doing the opposite basically. Because I don't know what to do. <laughs> so we need a new topic. Um, I'm really not sure what to do, what combinations are good. I haven't seen Dungeon before, that is one I haven't come across. Um, but a Dungeon RPG sounds really cool. So maybe we should do that. We haven't done an RPG in a while. Um, hopefully that will go down well on the play system. There we go, and let's aim this at a young audience, because RPGs always seem to go down well with young audiences. Same for um, adventure games as well. Um, so what should we call this? Uh, let's call it Dungeons of Darkness, like that. Dungeons of Darkness, that sounds like a cool game. Alright, um, so that is all the decisions there made. I don't want to go for medium yet here, you see. I haven't done that yet, although maybe that's what's holding us back. i tell you what, this one will do small and the next one we will do medium, because when you click on medium games, things start to change when you're making them, and you kind of need more employees for that. I was hoping to have made uh, more money by now. Um, let's go with 2D graphics on this one. And right, now we've got to do our sliders. We've done this a few times before. RPG is all about gameplay and story. Um, let's go for a nice spread like that. That looks good. And we need to add in these ones. And the save game probably isn't going to make too much of a difference, but it only costs 5,000, so we might as well leave that in. And then. Another waiting game, we've got some hype going on. That's something cool. Normally when I'm developing games we don't get any hype at all. Um, but the last few ones that we've done we have got some hype which is cool. Anyway, I don't really need artificial intelligence. Um, but we do need better dialogues because we want to focus on that. And level design, in fact level design should be more of a priority in an RPG I think. Adventure is more for the storyline. Um, so the Vena Gear is no longer supported. We didn't develop any games on that. So, who cares. <laughs> Okay, and now it's time for the last set of sliders. Um, this is all about world design, not so much graphics and sound as well. So something like that looks okay. Let's add in the open world feature. And go for that. Okay. 
it generated almost half a million, 70,000 units. That's actually not too bad, although we invested a lot of time and money into the engine for that. Uh, but we need to increase the hype on this a little bit now as well. Let's start getting rid of those bugs and then we will uh, pay for some advertising. Just the smallest amount this time as well. Okay, let's do that. Marketing. Yep, 50,000 there. Hype is up to 17. And as soon as that starts to drop, I'm going to click on finish. Analysts has, have observed a strange trend lately where players around the world seem to have developed a curious taste for unusual games. Maybe a dungeon RPG is an unusual game. As one player put it, sometimes you just want to play something unique, a game based on an idea that's not usually the military action game or fantasy RPG, it's just to name examples. I really hope companies could bring some unique games to the market soon, I would definitely prefer them right now. So the new trend promises to bring an interesting challenge to the game developers' topic genre combinations which used to work well will suddenly be less favourable by more outlandish ideas might flourish. So maybe this game falls into that category but if not maybe we should try that on the next game. Okay so are we going to get any more points? Are we going to get any more? No we're probably not. Let's click on finish right as the hype went down as well. A new record for both. Great combo. Yeah, look at the design points. That's actually really high. Alright, this might be a good one. <laughs> this might be a hit. Okay, due to an increase in experience, the following staff have earned a raise. So now he's got an extra 12000 a month. That is going to eat into our money. So new research is available. Branching story and dialogue tree. Okay. Um, now we're waiting for the sales to come in. But while we do that, let's just do a little bit of contract work. Keep our guys busy. That is one we can do, because our guy is a designer. We haven't trained him in ages as well. I've been so focused on trying to get more money coming in. Um, the first reviews for our newly released game, Dungeons and Darkness, came in. I see a 10, but it looks like it's going to be an 8. It's an 8. <laughs> Another 8? Come on, let's get a 9 in there. A 7. Boo. <laughs> oh, 7.5 overall, but maybe it'll sell. I don't know. Let's have a look. It's going up, it's going up. It's not that great. It's probably going to tie us over again. This is the problem. Every game I make just seems to stagnate forward, not really making too much money. And um, we failed the contract as well. So, oh, we have a proposition here. Decrypt that message. Okay, this is a very special offer. Our agents have recently managed to borrow some research information, which might be of interest to you. Um, I'm going to... I was about to say decline that because usually, in my experience, this has been a topic and it costs about six or seven thousand, which seems like a decent deal. This is a fair bit more, however, it might be something different. So let's transfer the money and find out what it is. Oh, <laughs> feel like we've been conned. We've researched movies. Um, maybe that could be one of those strange combination things right there. We could mix movies with something. Uh, but let's send this guy on vacation. I think we need to train my guy up as well. And let's have a look here. I need to focus on technology, I think, more than anything. Um, so I think Make Me Think would be the one that does that. I haven't actually found that one out yet. So let's have a look at his little numbers. Okay, no, that is actually for research. Okay, so we learnt something there. Let's get this guy training on game design for pirates. That will get his design up. <clears throat> And then we will send my guy on a bit more training directly after, I think. So if ever we need to do research now, we should set my guy up to do it because uh, he's going to do it faster. So game dev, dev gems, I'm not sure what that's going to influence. Let's try coding complete and see what that does. Maybe that will do technology. Okay, it does and design as well. Okay, cool. Okay, that generated 600,000 in total with 86,000 units. That is not a lot. <laughs> you see, it's just tying us over again. So we're going to focus on training these guys. And uh, the trend is strange combinations. So after we've done a bit more training, we will make a game with a strange combination. Um, let's just do game design for pirates again. Get his points up there. And then we'll get my guy doing the same thing again. Okay, so train make me think. Actually, I've forgotten what it was. It was coding complete. That's the one. Oh, don't repeat yourself would probably help with speed, I reckon. That's kind of a giveaway there. 
you know what, this is totally worth it. You see, when you play this game through the first time, you know, you kind of get into a habit of just making games or not really paying too much attention to other things. Now, when we first moved into this office, maybe it would have been a good idea to train our guys up so that then when new games come out, they have higher points, which means, you know, all the different elements they add to that game gives us more design points and more technology points overall and makes the game rating higher. And that is something that I've kind of neglected, you know, the balance of training. So we're going to try and catch ourselves up. Um, we're just going to keep this guy working on game development. So let's start training him there. And then my guy is going to do, let's see, um, coding complete again, I think. Just get the technology up a little bit more. Right, Void Games at the convention. Let's watch the numbers tick over. Come on, don't want to watch this. <laughs> okay, 59,000. I think we had 60,000 last time. Okay, cool. We have 12,500 fans as well. Um, I think now is going to be the time to start developing the next game. His design is up, my technology is up, everything is good. Okay, Nintendo announced their next generation console called the TES 64 today. Uh, today. Expected in two months, it is the world's first gaming console to sport a 64-bit processor for graphics and audio. Nintendo said this will allow never-before-seen 3D realism. Awesome. In recent years, the Super TES has lost a lot, a lot of market share to more modern consoles. Market experts said that the hardware of the TES 64 is surely impressive, but expected, uh, sorry, but expressed their surprise that it will still use ROMs cartridges instead of the much cheaper and higher capacity CD-ROM format. Nevertheless, the TES 64 seems an impressive console and the Nintendo have said that it plans to aggressively price it against Sony's play system. Okay. When can we develop that next game? Okay, we're almost done. Right, let's start work on it. So, the trend is still strange combinations. Um, I'm not going to use my notes. Let's just look at something that's going to sound weird. So we could go with superheroes. Um, a simulation? <laughs> Simulate being a superhero? That sounds like an awesome idea for a game right there. Um, action would be pretty standard. Adventure as well. I think maybe strategy as well. But simulation, that just sounds like such an odd combination. And I think we're going to have to keep the costs quite minimal at the moment. Um, so this still has a large market share because it's a handheld. Although we could do a PC game. We haven't done one of those in some time. Yeah, I think we'll go with PC and we'll use the Play System Mark 1. Um, we will target this at a mature audience. I think that works better well with simulation if I remember correctly. And so we're going to give this a very creative name. We're going to call it Superhero Sim. How on earth did I come up with that name? Okay, right, let's click on Next. Uh, 2D graphics, we'll go with that, although 3D is cheaper. Um, for simulation, you do need to focus on the engine, so that's kind of like graphics as well, I do think. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go with 3D graphics. <laughs> Struggling to make up my mind, okay. Right, so simulation is always good with the engine and the gameplay. Nothing to do with story, so we're going to take off all of that right there. Let's just slide that around a bit. Um, okay. So market analysts, it seems that... Oh, it's normalised again. <laughs> Typical. As soon as I start developing it. However, we do have a little bit of hype from our fans, probably. Okay, media inquiry. I'm Steve O'Connell, a reporter for Planet GG. We've heard a rumour that your company is developing a game for mature audiences. Would you be willing to give an interview about this? Of course we would. Great. Thank you for your time. So that is going to give us some more hype as well and um, so the next stage with simulation I've got it written down as level design is important and AI as well so let's boost that up and then we don't need dialogues at all okay cool Okay, Planet GG has recently published an interview with Void Games. According to the interview the company is working on the first game targeted at mature players. A sumo owner of and Suma, owner and CEO of Void Games, said, We think that players are looking for more mature content in games and we are willing to take a risk to give it to them. Many industry experts say that sooner or later, um, games with mature themes will become common, or will become more common. We are curious to see how the market will react to these games. So the hype is going up. 
and it's time for the final part of development and we're going to put this at the middle like that um, actually no, let's, let's raise up the graphics a bit and put down the sound, sound is never too important ok I think that'll do unless you're doing a uh, music game like Dance Simulator or whatever that horrible one we made was ok so the hype is up, we just need to get rid of those bugs let's see if we can increase that a little bit just by adding some marketing ok so as soon as that drops let's see if we can get another bubble and um, today the new game platform TS64 by Nintendo has been released ok there we go, oh that was a bug, let's get rid of that and let's finish it ok so that is quite low on both of those I don't think this game is going to do very well at all new research available multiplayer and AI companions game review, our first review for superhero sim came in oh god that looks low doesn't it <laughs> it's a flop we tried to do something different and we got punished for it disappointing Ugh. It's not even going to sell, is it? Oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> oh dear, we're losing fans over this game as well. Well, we really messed up there. We really did. Let's do some research. This guy is going to take on a big research task because we have 93 points available. Um, I'm not sure which one of these go into the engine. Sometimes you just research them and they appear on the game as an option to click and then sometimes they don't. Um, let's go with branching story there and we'll get this guy to research a new topic and we will go with evolution okay research is done um, we still have more research points is there anything else we want to do at this point don't think so and um, we could do yeah let's actually do multiplayer and day night cycle let's get those in there as well what am I doing? Research. Okay. Day night cycle. And I think we're going to have to go all out at this point. The money just keeps going down, down, down. I don't see it going anywhere else. It happens every other time I play. And I think what we should do. There you go. Uh, the can't even be bothered to read the numbers. It's so bad. Um, I think what we should do is just go all out on this last game. And if we fail and we go bankrupt, then you guys are going to have to let me know what you want to see me do. We could try and start it all over again maybe with a plan and um, one idea that popped into my head is just to develop PC games in between focusing big games on different consoles because we know um, if you make an adventure RPG game on the gameling it's usually a big hit and then we could develop PC games in between because they're generally um, quite cheap to do they cost about 5000 each uh, but we're gonna go with a medium game on this so you can see what that is like um, I don't know what topic we're gonna go with let's have a look that's some of the notes that I've made. Um, I think I've done evolution before. What does that work well with? It works well with a simulation. Um, we just done a simulation game, so maybe not. Um, cyberpunk. Have I done that one before? Yes, I have. That works well with RPG. Let's do a cyberpunk RPG. Uh, we already done one of those. We can make this one a sequel. In fact, we could develop a sequel. Okay, there's an idea. So game history what was the cyberpunk RPG called? I think it was Hackers okay that was a cyberpunk action game so this will be the sequel to that okay let's go select it Hackers and we're gonna make this a cyberpunk RPG it's gonna be called Hackers 2 it's gonna be a medium game um, aimed at a young audience because RPGs usually work well with young audiences. Um, what platform are we going to do this on? I think we are going to have to do it on the play system. We are going all out here. We're going to pick the play system mark one. So let's click on next. We will go with 2D graphics. And we are starting development. We are spending all of our money on this. <laughs> this is it. Okay, boss, someone seems to have stolen our credit card. Uh, information and used it to buy a lot of things in the past three months unfortunately we have lost eight grand it's not really a lot but that is another kick in the teeth it's all about hackers too now 
So creating large games is a significant task and unlike in small games one person cannot effectively be responsible for every aspect of the game. To create a good game make sure you have the best your team will be assigned to which sorry to make best use of your team you'll have to assign which of your team is responsible for which areas. So this um, Okay, let's just read this bit. And um, pick team members whose skills match the areas with the best result. When you assign a team member responsibilities, when you assign a team member responsibilities, I think there's supposed to be an S on that. A team members responsibilities, you will see their workload. And um, try not to overload them with too much. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Um, we are doing an RPG game, so that means we need to focus on the story and not so much on the engine. And so I think story is about design. So we are going to get this guy right here onto that. And we need him to do these two things as well. And then I will take care of the rest. <laughs> okay, so it's an even split on the work as well, which is pretty good. And now we will be both we will both be working on different things, which can you um, can usually lead to like a real increase on design if that's the kind of game you're focusing on. That's something I found before. I had three people working on a game and the design points kind of went through the roof. Um, so for the next stage we need to do dialogues. Actually it's more of an RPG so we should keep the level design high. AI we don't really need so we'll get rid of that as well but we'll put in better dialogues. Um, so our design guy will take care of the level design and then I will take care of these two things here. And now we're both at 100% and yet we have one more category to do, which means we're kind of being overworked. And I'm wondering, is that going to affect the game? You know, Maybe you shouldn't do medium games until you have a large enough um, group of people in your office. So in two months, the Super Tez will be taken off the market. That's fine, that's fine. We did develop a few games on that console. And so let's have a look. Um, for an RPG we just need to do the world design, not so much on graphics or sound. Okay, so who's going to do what? We'll get him on world design and I'll take care of the lesser parts as well. And this, this part of the game can really suffer because he's been overworked, you see. I am a little worried about that. The points aren't really going up too much at this point. Okay, we've got some hype, and um, we are going to invest everything into this because I don't see us going too much further along with this game if this flops. So we can't, we don't have that much money. Let's go with magazines and demos, and we are going all out here for this game. Okay, we're at hype 19. Let's wait for another bubble. We got one for technology. Let's finish the game. Okay, that's fine. Oh, and now you've made a bug. Oh, I didn't click on finish apparently. Okay, there we go. So we've got a new record there. We have a new combo and a great combo. Some leveling up. Let's release the game. So we found some Easter eggs and stereo sounds for research. And uh, we're going to go to a games convention as well. So we have to pay another 80,000. We are down to 90,000 pounds. This is it. We are all in. <laughs> okay, the reviews have come in. And it is a six this is not going to do well. I think this is going to be pretty much it for our company now. We tried but we failed. Let's see. Unless some miracle happens and it sells a lot, I don't think we're going to be doing that good. Yep. It's not that great. It is not that great at all. So um, I'm not going to just you know run the company into the red. We can see here that it's not really going to do that well at all. Um, I'm thinking I want to start over again, maybe write down a plan or some sort of you know, um, way to play the game so we can be successful. If you have any tips, leave a comment about that as well. Um, and let me know if you want me to start all over again because that's going to be it for this. You can see we're just going to go into the red with the next game. Um, so yeah, leave a comment, any ideas, any tips, and if you actually want to see me start again. And we will try and you know make a really successful and business but obviously this is my first time playing the game I have been doing some research while playing um, but it hasn't served me too well so as always thank you very much for watching and I will catch you